you need to do your best to educate as many times as you need to. And, and that's every visit. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, my name is Natalie. I'm a family nurse practitioner and basically the goal of my channel is to help pre-nursing, nursing, as well as FNP students get through school as easily as possible. I also take a look and review at personal statements and resumes. So if that's something that you need done, please take a look at the description box down below and it'll tell you about the whole process of how that can be done. So for this video, I wanted to talk about the issue of patient compliance because nothing bugs me more than a provider that automatically goes to the conclusion that a patient is non-compliant when it comes to certain treatments or medications or all of that. There are a lot of different um, variables that can play into what a patient might appear to be non-compliant, but I wanted to go through different possibilities of what it could be. Of course, at the end of the day, some patients are just not compliant and you know there's not much to do about that, um, but I definitely want to talk about other reasons why a patient might appear to be non-compliant so that you can do your best to you know discover all avenues before you put that stamp on a patient because to me it's not fair to just automatically say you know they're just not compliant I, I don't know what to do so because we're providers we're supposed to do our best to get to the root of the problem of the solution and you know figure out what we're gonna do there because we want to take the best care of our patients so let's go through some of those possibilities so the first thing that could appear to make a patient be non-compliant is a language barrier. So if you have somebody come into your clinic that speaks Spanish or another language or whatever, you need to make sure that whatever translator or whatever app that you're using is very accurate because some terminology that we use in English versus Spanish might mean different things and sometimes um, you know, it doesn't come across properly of either what is going on or the significance of whatever is going on. And that's important to really relay because it's obviously going to be a little bit easier to relay that to someone that speaks the same language as you, but you need to make sure that whatever translator you're using is not, you know, you're saying a whole big sentence and they're just saying a little like synopsis of it. You need to make sure that every detail is expressed because they need to know the level of urgency or whatever medication that it is that they need to take and it's not fair that just because there's a language difference that they can't get that same level of care and understanding of what is going on in their own body in their conditions whatever it is so i would recommend um i mean i know that resources are kind of limited depending on where you are um sorry that's my dog <laughs> but um you know you have to make sure hold on one second come here you have to make sure that whatever translator you're using, that they're accredited, that they understand to translate medical terms. It's not just saying, you know, learn knowing the, the language. You have to be able to translate medical terms. It's extremely, extremely important. Um, and also maybe another thing that you could recommend is to recommend them to a physician that does speak their language so that it's easier on them. I know that I understand that it removes a patient from your practice, but at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day hold on one second um we have to do what's best for our patients and if someone is just not going to understand um how we explain things we need to do our best to find somewhere else that does because it, it's not fair for someone to not understand the severity of their care just because we can't relay it and then the translator whether it's an app or an individual is not doing a good job of giving the details to the patient so that's something that can make a patient not be compliant because you might tell them what to do, the translator translates to them, but they don't really understand. And it's very tough for a patient to say, I don't understand something. I would be the same way. I'd be like, okay, yeah, I understand. Then I'm go home and like, what did he say? What did she say? So just make sure that whatever translating method you're using is appropriate and as accurate as possible from some accredited source. And if that can't be done, please try to send them to another place that speaks the same language as them because it's at the end of the day they need to know what's going on and it's not fair if they can't understand because there's a translation um, complication so that could be the first thing that could appear a patient to be non-compliant the second reason why a patient can be non-compliant is because we as providers are not using layman's terms we're using medical terms to the patient and i've seen so many physicians use these big medical terms that if you're in the field you understand but I see patients and their eyes are wide open like I have 
no clue what you're saying. It's extremely important to use layman's terms with patients in a level where everybody can understand because I don't care if you are educated to the max or you're not, if you're not in the medical field, it's not always easy to understand the terms and I think that that's something that's extremely important. I think it's okay um, to use medical terms, but to make sure to explain what you're saying. You know, some people don't always know the term hypertension, for example, but they may know high blood pressure. So it's just kind of making sure that you use words that they understand um, so that they don't feel like they have to go home and research something that could be completely wrong. And there's going to be a lot of times when patients are going to say, oh yeah, I understand, and then you can kind of tell that they're really not understanding. But again, it's going to be difficult for a patient to say, I don't understand, because who wants to go to a doctor's office or anywhere and feel stupid or feel that they don't understand and that they have to get the doctor to explain again? I think a lot of patients would rather go home and not have to do that and research things and whatever they're researching, you know, you go online and and everyone has every symptom online. So if you feel like your patient is just not understanding and you can kind of get the vibe if they're not understanding, instead of asking them, do you understand? Because most of the time the patient's gonna say, oh yeah, 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 I do. You could say, you know what? I don't think that I explained that appropriately. Let me explain it again. So that way they can get the information again and they don't have to feel that they're the ones asking for the information again, you're offering it to them. It's a way you say things to patients that I think makes patients come back. Um, because you can kind of get the vibe of like, okay, they don't understand, let me, let me explain it to them without having them to admit it. And I know sometimes it can be a time issue or whatever, but I would rather take a little bit more time with the patient that they understand exactly what they're doing and maybe they can relay the information back to me um, versus you know, going quickly to the next patient and they have no idea what's going on and then they keep coming back and back and back and nothing is done because they just didn't understand the first time. So that's something to keep in mind also. And there's another thing too that they may not understand, like let's say for example for medications, you know, when you prescribe medication, you let's say for example you say twice daily, some people don't understand what twice daily is. You might want to like write on say two times per day, take one pill in the morning, take one pill at night, something like that for them to understand. And if you want to see if they can understand, don't say, are you taking your medication as prescribed? Because people are gonna say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You just wanna say, you kind of wanna say, um, like let's say for example, um, what medications are you taking? Let's see if they know the name. Do you, you can ask, do you know what it's for? They can say, you know, yes or no, tell them to say what it is. And then you could always say, tell me how you take your medications because there's no yes or no answer that I have to figure out oh, I'm taking it, you know, once a week or kind of when I feel like it, and then you can know whether or not they're taking it as prescribed. There are certain ways to ask things to get the answer that you need without making the patient feel less than. Because if you say, oh, you're taking it as prescribed, yes. It's like, okay, well, how many times a day or how many times a week are you taking it? Well, I take it one or two times a week. And you're like, okay, no, you're not taking it as prescribed. So it's also the terminology that you're using, how you ask questions, because if they don't understand what they're supposed to do and the severity of it, then they're gonna look non-compliant. And some people are, but then some people aren't, and they want to understand, but they don't want to be the ones to say, hey, listen, I, I have no idea what you just said. So just kind of be the advocate for your patient, make sure that they understand before they go home and get answers in a way where you know that they understand as well. So just keep that in mind also. Another thing that can make a patient appear non-compliant is if their conditions are related to a secondary problem. So for example, like you have high blood pressure, you give the patient their medication, they're taking the medication as prescribed in reality and they're still not having their you know blood pressure be lower so you're wondering are they actually taking the medication are they not are they you know whatever um, but if it's due to a secondary cause then sometimes the blood pressure or one blood pressure medication isn't gonna work sometimes you need two or you need three or you need to send them to a cardiologist because it's a severe secondary cause so that's something that you need to take in mind too it's not just automatically assume oh okay well their blood pressure has not changed so they must be non-compliant that 
is not always the case. Maybe they just need another regimen, they need another additional regimen, or they need to be um, referred to a specialty. So again, don't automatically just assume that somebody's non-compliant, it's not fair. Try to ask other questions, see if they have, are having any other symptoms to maybe support a secondary cause of why, let's say for example, their blood pressure is not being lowered with just one medication. So keep that in mind also. And the final thing is, is that a patient is just non-compliant. You've gone through all of the steps to kind of see, was there something on my end that I didn't do or didn't explain properly? Is there something on their end that they didn't understand? But if that is all kind of squared away and they're just non-compliant, there's not too, too much to do with that. The thing that I would recommend when you have a patient that's non-compliant is you do everything in your power to educate the severity of the condition, educate why they need to be on this medication, educate that if they don't take this medication that you know X, Y, and Z is, could happen or it could just cause more additional problems. You need to do your best to educate as many times as you need to. And, and that's every visit. Like for example, if they are you know a smoker, Sometimes, you know, usually per visit, you just want to say, hey, you want to quit or, you know, have you tried looking at different regimens? You kind of want to do that all the time to see if they change your mind at some point. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it takes one time asking a question. Sometimes it takes 200 times asking it. And on that 201st time, they're like, I want to quit. So you just don't give up. You do your best to educate as much as you can. And if there's a medication that you need to prescribe that they refuse to take, you prescribe it anyway. You do everything on your part to give the care that they need. But at the end of the day, a patient and provider relationship is a partnership. So I do my part, but at the end of the day, the patient has to do their part and pick up the medication, take the medication as prescribed, do what they need to do to get better. You can't force a patient to go and take their medication. You can, you know, send the medication to their house and make it easier for them. You can do everything in your power, but at the end of the day, whether it's at their house, whether it's at the pharmacy or whatever it is, they need to be the ones to open up the bottle and take the medication. So it's kind of frustrating when you have patients like that. I've seen patients like that, that they don't either want to take the medication, they don't believe in the diagnosis that you diagnose them with, even though you have all of the supporting data to <laughs> support whatever you said. Um, but you just do your best. You do your best to educate. Every time they come back, keep educating them and keep prescribing them what they need to be taking. And maybe one day they'll take it, maybe they won't, but you need to know at least you did your part. You did everything in your partnership to help them with their health and now it's their turn to come and receive that help and help themselves. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that kind of helps people, mostly FNP students or anybody in the field, kind of get an idea of maybe different ways of why a person or a patient might appear to be non-compliant. It's very important to go through all those different steps. I'm not saying that you go into your visit and you think, okay, well, could it be this, could it be that? Over time, you'll start to ask questions and see where the non-compliance is coming from. Is it an actual patient's non-compliance? Is it some other barrier or some sort of educational um, misinterpretation? Something like that to get to the root of the problem. And at the end of the day, if they're just non-compliant, again, do everything in your power to give them the help that they need. So thank you guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys have a wonderful morning, afternoon, night. And remember to always, always believe in yourself. All right? Have a great one, guys. Bye.